Hello, thank you for this opportunity, Derek. Well, I'm Miriam Tena. I'm presenting from Spain. I'm a property specialist, smart buildings and smart cities passionate. <laughs> I've been working for real estate for more than 15 years. Now I'm going to present the sustainable cities and mobility. Well, in fact, smart cities and sustainable cities means how our cities are organized and used. Technology has already transformed our lives. Now we have to think to move away from a technology-led approach towards a design approach that is people-centered. The city then will reflect the needs of citizens and challenges they face. Today, we will cover engaging citizens, co-creating smart cities, all age friendly cities design, IoT, smart mobility, and mobility on demand. Well, our world today, 2015, 68 to 75 percent of the population will live in cities. So, what a challenge. An improved approach should consider citizens as active agents within the development process of a smart city. They can collaborate in co-creating smart cities together with the private sector, governments and knowledge institutes. Citizens can bring a lot of value to the table when they are part of the design and innovation pro process taking innovative initiatives, communicating them to their city government and developing them together. Engaging citizens using design thinking is a good idea. First, identify who is impacted by the problem or who might have an influence on the problem. Citizens, business, city government, community groups, and say briefly why they are affected or influential. You would need to work with the people who face the problem to empathize with their point of view. This is stage one. Define, then, Clearly articulate the city problem with a couple of sentences from their point of view. This is stage two. And prototype. Collecting ideas and exploring potential solutions to city problems. What are the living labs? Well, European network of Living Labs is an organization where um, European way where digital solutions help to create places where people enjoy living and working. In times when cities and communities are looking to digital solutions, we must boost these efforts through a, a European way where digital solutions help to create places where people enjoy living and working. Digital solutions are brought to include approaches to smart urban mobility, energy efficiency, sustainable housing, digital public services, and civic-led governance. These solutions are crucial to help our cities and communities meet their climate targets and reduce their environmental footprint while fostering citizen participation and bringing prosperity to all types of business. Now in January 2020, cities all sizes sign a commitment to ensure not to leave anyone behind. They wrote those, those cities you can see in this, this slide, uh, recently signed an agreement 
and they sign so this, this extract, for example. We, decision makers at all levels of government together with organizations and networks of, of cities and communities of all sizes, believe that strong cooperation through multi-level governance in the EU and co-creation with citizens, very important, are the key to our mission of turning our cities and communities into smart and sustainable places where people enjoy living and working. We aim for a cohesive digital Europe where every community can enjoy economic and social benefits of this transformation while making sure not to leave anyone behind. Now, let's take a look to another way of collecting ideas, innovation ideas, crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing. For city ideas platforms to be effective, they must be clear about the types of ideas citizens are being asked to propose. Another critical factor is transparency concerning the incentives being offered to citizens to encourage their participation. Without these strategies, there is a risk that citizens will quickly become disengaged. Clarity is also crucial in developing strategies for assessing ideas, for funding and implementing them, and for communicating all of this to citizens. Now let's take a look to a Canadian Smart Cities Challenge. This is an example. And for them, they hope to realize outcomes for residents. It will be vital for communities to measure where they are starting from and where, when they are making progress and when they have achieved success. Establishing a baseline and measuring results, very important, measuring. Empower communities to innovate. Communities should take risk and think big. Identify significant pressing and perceived unsolvable problems and achieve outcomes through data and connected technology. Forge new partnerships and networks. Communities will need to undertake meaningful engagement with residents and forge relationships with new and non-traditional partners and spread the benefit to all Canadians. Not only the benefit of a single community, they should be scalable and replicable across Canada. This is one of the examples. Now let's talk about all age friendly cities design. Bike friendly, dog friendly, this comes to our mind when thinking of present transformation of cities. But what about most important, age-friendly? Designing cities, taking in account all age perspectives to meet their needs is the key to build a present and future better living and not to leave anyone behind. The researchers found that all too often, smart city reports make no mention of the wide variety of age groups living in cities or of the different and sometimes shared needs of a multi-generational city. For example, all age friendly city project from the University of Bristol brought together researchers working in childhood and aging members of local government, artists, community groups, computer science, developers, planners, practitioners working with children and older adults to develop ideas about how cities might better meet the needs and interests of our oldest and youngest generations. And they identified four areas. Building intergenerational trust very important. Encouraging encounters across generations. Reimagining housing and creating all age friendly transport systems. 
for example, possible ideas for improving cities, for example, using digital technology to encourage accidental encounters between different generations, Map mapping social media data to find out how different generations feel about transport systems and redesigning housing to meet multi-generational needs. Then, let's take a look to IoT technology around us. Okay, pretty much any physical object can be transformed into IoT device if it can be connected to the internet to be connected or communicate information. Devices could be very different from toys to drive less trucks, for example, or even larger objects like jet engines that, that's now filled with thousands of sensors collecting and transmitting data back to make sure it's operating efficiently. Upon Rakesh Sharma, an expert uh, in this field, building blocks, the sensors are the building blocks of smart cities. because they gather data about its vital statistics and in turn ensure that city functions smoothly. As cities move towards becoming smarter, demand for sensors has increased. According to a new report from IDT Tech X Research, the market for environment sensors or sensors that monitor pollution levels and other environment-related metrics is expected to be worth more than 3 billion by 2027. It's really huge. For example, in Oslo, Norway, Oslo, the city has fitted public transit buses with environment sensors because they say buses have the advantage of following the same route several times a day, so temporal coverage of any area is possible, while bicycles can visit areas that automobiles and large monitoring stations cannot. By traveling through parks, through alleys, side streets, such sensors can detect pollution on a hyper-local level. Demand for sensors has also led to new form factor of and other innovations in the sensor market. For example, Xerox research arm PARC secured 19 million in funding from federal government to develop peel and stick sensors that can detect air quality, temperatures, humidity, occupancy, and the sensors are powered using radio frequency energy. So, in other words, you can simply stick a sensor onto a surface and use it. This is the future. So, this is all of regarding the cities, citizens' engagement, and uh, all age-friendly cities, and what's going on now. Then let's talk about mobility, challenges and solutions. Here we will take a look to mobility problems and then mobility solutions and future of urban mobility. Strategies to meet city mobility challenges and solve urban mobility problems are unique to each city and involve designing effective, equitable, safe and secure public transport systems integrated with mobility as a service and other platforms. Adapting to vehicle innovation and adoption. Crafting policies and strategies to meet to air quality standards and other quality of life measures developing public-private partnerships, PPS, and collaborating with knowledge institutions to address air quality, traffic congestion, and sustainability issues. Building sustainable infrastructure, 
physical and digital to support innovative mobility solutions from public to private sectors. So smart cities must, must deliver effective smart mobility solutions while encouraging innovation, facilitating a collaborative ecosystem and meeting sustainable goals. Let's take a look to urban mobility problems. Taking action to reduce and control pollution levels is a major priority, really. You know, in the UA, we have urban mobility accounts, 40% of all CO2 emissions and 70% of other pollutants from transport. It's really, those rates are really, really high. Really, most European countries don't meet any, any air quality standards. And air pollution now is a risk and causing an estimated of 400,000 premature deaths a year. Added to this, the cost of road congestion in Europe is equivalent to estimated 1% of GDP and its mitigation is the main priority of most infrastructure traffic management and road charge, charging measures. European road fatalities is another of the challenges. They are increasing in many cities and comprise 37% of Europe's total traffic fatalities in 2017 and it's increasing every year. Urban population density combined with cars, trucks, and public transport vehicles sharing crowded streets with vulnerable road users, pedestrians, cyclists, and motorcyclists, makes the task of providing safe mobility a complex challenge, really. Unsafe driving habits and inadequate infrastructure for cycling and micro-mobility users is a key really. Added to this, cyber attacks. Okay. Cyber attacks. Cyber criminals are increasingly able to attack not only the information technology, but also the operational technology that runs a city signaling and control systems. Cyber attacks could disrupt urban transport networks and trigger outages in public transport services. Well, once reviewed the challenge, let's go to solutions. Smart urban mobility solutions. For example, mobility as a service. We have an example. Mover combines and facilitates the use of multimode transport and shared mobility services and enables payments via a single interface. Transport options such as public transport, on-demand services, vehicle sharing, bike sharing, and ride hailing. Customers can book and pay for mobility services through an integrated account. This is quite a good solution. Others are sustainable travel behavior, for example, like Time's Up, transforms a user's calendar into the perfect travel assistant. We have intelligent traffic management solutions like PSI roads. Uh, this smart city mobility solutions offers intelligent traffic, traffic management services. So change of traffic light phases, road user information and dynamic changes in traffic capacity. Traffic congestion service, for example. Congestion in urban areas is caused by drivers looking for a parking space. Well, Parkery can so get the solution for you. Micromobility management. Well, here we have share bikes and electric scooters, e-scooter sharing and e-scooter solution providers. 
public transport innovation. In Poland, for example, there is an innovative passenger information system. They have uh, already tested in the city of Lublin and they have installed GSM and GPRS equipment in the vehicles. Electronic displays, advanced stops, dispatch center software, and website offering dynamic information for passengers. By modernizing transport infrastructure and improving communications with passengers, this city, Lublin, shows that mid-sized cities can achieve far-reaching upgrades in the user experience and quality of urban mobility. Let's take a look at the future. Visions of the future. The future of mobility. The Boston Consulting Group believes widespread adoption of autonomous technologies could yield substantial benefits by eliminating road fatalities, improving travel times but up to 40%, recovering billions of hours lost to commuting and congestion, and generating total benefits to society worth 1.3 trillion. Really awesome. And for example, Thomas Mueller, co-founder of Smart City, says, smart cities must deliver effective mobility solutions while encouraging innovation, facilitating a collaborative system and meeting sustainable goals. Related to mobility, we have a big challenge with driveless cars, for example, and last mile delivery. Mobility on demand. Over the next decade, self-driving as a feature of transportation will become as commonplace as cruise control. The autonomous vehicle industry will be worth by 2050, seven trillion. The autonomous vehicles, to put it, this in perspective, this is twice the size of Germany's entire economy. Like any new technology, self-driving cars represent a significant new opportunity, but they also pose significant new risks. They will, this autonomous 80s, this 80s, they will first need to be regulated and regulating self-driving cars remains a complicated challenge. You know, it happened when long before the arrival of the self-driving cars, uh, there was the elevator. Elevators transform how humans physically move through buildings, eventually eliminating the need for human operators to, altogether. Like elevators, 80s technology will completely transform urban mobility. I do believe so. Driveless vehicles will help smooth traffic flow and reduce congestion, congestion by automating transportation across ever advancing telecommunication networks. But even as the capabilities of AVs continue to evolve, it's not a given that consumers will choose to buy them. What is more likely is that on demand nature of driveless cars will reshape the transportation industry altogether. That's why I, uh, I have uh, this question for everybody. Is the end of the car ownership, the shift to mobility as a service accelerated by AVs? This Daniel Araya expert who says uh, it will be for sure the shift and to mo uh, mobility as a service using driveless cars. And what about 
last mile deliver problems? Well, innovation is last, in last mile freight and parcel delivery solutions could yield significant benefits for cities by reducing traffic congestion in urban centers, improving public health by lessening greenhouse gas emissions and contributing to the success of sustainable urban economies. That's what experts say. Uh, mm, I think the problems uh, for the last mile delivery, the main problems are that more than 50 of road transport fuel is combusted in urban areas. Last mile delivery costs comprise 53% of total cost of shipping. Well, um, taking in account that the last mile of delivery is the final stage in the shipping process, culminating with arrival of a package or goods to customer's destinations, where well, we have some challenges to to work on. Mm. Due to the steady growth of e-commerce, the number of delivery vehicles and the volume of deliveries and locations have dramatically increased. In addition, the market for urban delivery services is undergoing an evolution with independent drivers and new entrants competing with traditional career firms. So, what are the last mile solutions? Well, we can uh, take a look to innovative approaches that are being introduced in the last mile, include new logistic models, flexible delivery, social delivery, services and parcel lockers. For example, innovative logistic model and a goal of establishing sustainable logistic network with bicycles, tricycles, electric power vans, cargo hopper, for example, as well. They have uh, produces electric vehicles designed to deliver parcels in urban areas, and then flexible delivery, for example, after a retail arranges for the service, a company called GLS informs the customer via email about the planned delivery, the estimated time of delivery. And the customer prefers a different time. He can change his, well, it's flexible, really. Social delivery services offer potential solutions for the last mile B2C challenge. I think this one is, was very, is, is very, very interesting because um, those companies uh, receive and deliver parcels for neighbors. Products ordered online are delivered to a neighbor who serves as a via point. The consumer who ordered the product can pick it up at the via point or have it delivered to their home for a small fee. In, this is uh, working in Norway. And, pass, and, and parcel lockers smart parcel lockers. Services are provided by installing group of locked boxes in convenient locations used as collection points. Well, this has been an overview of these uh, challenges for sustainable future sustainable cities. And I would like you to thank you for, for listening. You can uh, get in touch with me and uh, ask whatever you, you wish to ask me about. And for the end, well, let's be inspired, is inspired. Like Albert Einstein say, imagination is more important than knowledge. Let's, let's imagine future cities together. Perfect. Thank you so much for that, Miriam. I do have uh, one question for you. We're almost out of time, but if you have an mm -hmm. extra uh, minute or two, if you could briefly uh, share with us your thoughts on how uh, co-working will intersect with the future of smart cities. Well, 
Yes, co-working uh, will be um, co-working will be the way uh, all of us will work in the future because it's um, it's a way to interact, to create networks, to create communities, and to shift the way we've been working until now. Is the future really, and for all generations, not only for youngsters, and I've been talking about all age friendly cities and all age friendly, uh, all age friendly uh, workplaces.